Jack Jennings and in this video I'm going to tell you five different things you can do to make your guitar playing sound more Indian or more Indian classical to be specific. Everything I'm doing is actually just in D major. You might think that the first thing to try would be playing exotic scales um, but actually we can get a really authentic Indian sound without even changing from the major scale and it's actually a good idea to do it just in the major scale to start with because then you can branch out from there and it just means that you're looking at the technical and the stylistic things more than just simply playing an altered scale. The first thing I would really suggest is playing with a tempura drone. When you play with a drone, it firmly establishes the single tonic that you're working with in Indian classical music. And it will inspire you to use the sustain of your notes held against the drone to bring out the sound of each note and it will just immediately start to create the sort of atmosphere that will help you to elaborate your guitar playing in this way. The second thing I would suggest is, this is a bit more of a sacrifice really, change the strings. So instead of having your low E and A strings, try changing them for two high strings. These are two gauge eight, really thin high strings. And they're both tuned to D, which is a great key to play in for Indian classical music on the guitar. So they're just in unison, and those are called chikari strings. We would have those on the sitar, and the chikari strings are a really important part of any Indian instrument. And the thing about that is that it gives you something that you play in between the phrases that you do. That really... texture between the main phrases that you play and you use it for all kinds of rhythmic things like this so maybe if you've got a spare guitar that you can experiment with this um, if you don't have that you can just play drop D tuning that's also fine just to get started but you can't really do all of the all of the rhythmic playing that you normally do with chikari strings the third thing would be to play on a single string. When you play on a single string, even if you just do a scale, there's something about the continuity of the tone colour on that single string. And the fact that you're more likely to sort of slide and blend the notes together that already has more of a vocal sound and an instrument like the sitar plays on a single string for the vast majority of all the phrases. So that already puts you into more of an Indian kind of framework in terms of the way that you're moving around the instrument. And you'll find that it makes you phrase in a very different way. The fourth point would be another offshoot really of playing on one string it's using ornamentations and combining ornamentations together. So, for example, on the guitar you can play slides, you can play bends, and you can do some hammer on and pull off. But there's something about combining these nuances together within a single phrase which has more of a vocal sound to it. So, for example, something like... So that was a... bend and then another slide. Okay, so, so that was just two different notes, but doing an ornamentation in three or four different ways between those notes, and then just doing all kinds of different, different combinations, long bends, slow bends, fast slides, all these different combinations that has more of a vocal sound to it. And again, that goes hand in hand with playing on a single string. It kind of forces you to be a bit more creative and resourceful with what you can do. The fifth idea would be to play different patterns moving across the scale, again on a single string. 
A very common pattern in sitar playing would be this. So it's a pattern of three notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but it's often played with a sense of rhythmic displacement moving across eight notes. So for example, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So it has a nice feeling of coming on and off the beat when you're moving to the different patterns. So playing that mixing with Chikari strings as well could sound and that kind of thing sped up sounds really quite different again. One thing I'd add to that is that often with the faster runs you can actually play the open D string at the same time as your G. So the downstroke hits that D string and then the upstroke comes away with just the G. Um, so that gives it a kind of a kind of energy with that open string ringing out. You don't really notice it that much, especially in a faster kind of movement because your ear is really drawn to the high note, but it just gives it this kind of visceral energy and it keeps driving home the single tonic that we have. And that teamed up with the tabla and the tempura drone really starts to create that whole texture that you have supporting that very singular fast line. So I hope you guys have found this interesting. Um, please ask me questions if you want to know more about playing this style on the guitar. Oh, one thing that really helps is um, yeah, try blocking the trem or putting all of the springs in and tightening it up just so if you've got a floating bridge you want that to be blocked. So when you're playing the shikaris and then bending you don't have your drone strings kind of dipping and going out of tune as you bend the other strings. So that's really important. But furthermore if you really like this kind of thing, Indian classical music on the guitar, then be sure to check out my course Essential Techniques for Indian Guitar which goes into tons of depth about this and we learn all about how to structure a whole rag recital and all these techniques are really expanded upon. And it's 50% off until 1st of June, so there's just a few days left. Once this video is coming out, there's just three days left. But after that, it's still available, so do check out my website, playleadguitar.net, and I'll see you guys soon on another video. Thanks, bye!